Hey there, kitties. Dr. Dan here. Dr. Dan's biodiesel. Is your car biodiesel compatible? Woo! Does it use diesel fuel? Then the answer is yes. Um, everybody wonders about hoses, gaskets, and seals, and do I need to convert my car to run on biodiesel? Uh, the answer is no, you do not have to convert your car to run on biodiesel. Almost every vehicle out there came with biodiesel compatible components on it in the first place. Uh, so you basically just have to put the fuel in the tank. But the things to watch out for is that biodiesel will clean out your fuel tank. Whatever is in your tank will end up in the filter, filter plugs, the car can quit running and damage some other components. So you need to be sharp and stay on top of those things. Um, this is a TDI from uh, the um, early 20th century. The uh, hose is on here. This car has been running biodiesel for, for years. You can see the hoses look just fine. Uh, even the fuel injector return hoses. Uh, very often we replace uh, these hoses because they have hot fuel that goes through them and they're harder with uh, some Viton. Um, but if you replace it with the right hose that you get from Volkswagen, it's exactly for this application then you know, it should last for uh, a long time. Uh, if you replace it with the wrong hose, uh, you know, just the regular vacuum hose, then it won't last. So you want to make sure to put the right stuff on there. It's expensive, um, but it works, uh, it works out quite well. Um, if you have a questionable vehicle, like a, an older one, and the hoses uh, begin to look like that, you can see it actually looks like it has fuel on the outside. That is not a biodiesel compatible hose. And, uh, you know, this hose is on its way out. But, uh, you know, this particular hose has been like that for a year or so. Um, so you should just open up the hood of your vehicle and look at things uh, occasionally. Anyway, you know, check the oil and the fluids and, uh, and look at all that stuff. Um, Vehicles that uh, are, you know, might have a hard time with biodiesel. Some of the newer vehicles that have uh, particulate traps, particularly ones that have in-cylinder post-injection. In-cylinder post-injection, what's that? Well, the uh, particulate trap is a device that's literally just a big filter that filters and stores soot. And when it gets plugged up, computer senses a uh, back pressure and so it needs to clean it out. How does it clean it out? It's just like a self-cleaning oven. It squirts in a, a bunch of fuel and that fuel goes down there to the uh, hot catalyst and creates quite the hot fire and burns up the soot. How does the fuel get down there? On some systems there's a, a little squirt gun right before the particulate trap that squirts fuel right to it. That system works great. Uh, but if you have in cylinder post injection, that means that fuel gets squirted into the combustion chamber of the engine and then has to make it uh, out of the cylinder, you know, through the exhaust and through the turbo and then down to the exhaust pipe. Because um, biodiesel has a much higher flash point than regular diesel. That's the, uh, the temperature that it flashes at, or uh, combusts, or vaporizes. 100% uh, biodiesel has a flash point of close to uh, 400 degrees. That's, yeah, that's way up there. Uh, regular diesel has a flash point of about 130 degrees. So the vehicles have in-cylinder post-injection with regular diesel. They squirt some fuel into the combustion chamber when the exhaust valve is open, that fuel vaporizes, and that vaporized fuel makes it out of the motor and, uh, and to the particular trap to combust and clean it. The uh, uh, biodiesel, since it has a higher flash point, not all of it makes it out. Some of it turns to liquid and you can get uh, uh, engine oil dilution with biodiesel which isn't you know really a hugely bad thing on its own because it has very good lubricity but too much of it is very bad and also it's not doing what it was supposed to be doing which was to regenerate the particulate trap 
So that could be quite the sticky wicket. Uh, lead to check engine lights, uh, lead to, you know, completely ignored to engine failure because of motor oil dilution. Um, oh, by the way, they get motor oil dilution with regular ultra low too. Just uh, there is more with biodiesel because of the issue of the flashpoint. Um, and yeah, it could be, you know, quite the, the issue. So uh, if you're not prepared to deal with those, then you need to stick with the lower blends, you know, B5, B10, uh, B20, something like that. Uh, let's see, we've covered the particulate traps, we've covered hoses, uh, compatibility, oh, injection pumps. Woo! We've had a. Uh, uh, we as a nation switched over to ultra-low sulfur diesel in the uh, beginning of uh, 2007. Um, and the, uh, it's about every, every leaking injection pump has had ultra-low sulfur diesel in it at the time. The ultra-low has a shrinking effect on the seals and biodiesel has a swelling effect. We've got a video on there about uh, healing an injection pump uh, with, with biodiesel. Um, so almost all the leaks that we've seen have had ultra low in them. Uh, as far as the hoses, gasket, and seals, there's a uh, uh, document on the Chevron website that talks about that. And also when we switch from high sulfur fuel to low sulfur fuel, I forget when that was in the, uh, um, in the 80s, we had the same issue. Uh, injection pumps and fuel systems were leaking all over the place. So this is, is very common. Uh, I don't think it's a fair statement to say that your leak was caused by using biodiesel. We had many customers who've been using biodiesel for years. Then they go on vacation, put in a couple tanks of ultra low, and it sits in there for a couple weeks, and then the, the pump leaks. We, we uh, put biodiesel back in it, and then it quits leaking. So. Uh, I don't see the logic of blaming that on, uh, on uh, ultra low. And also, it seems to be mainly the 2000 to 2003 uh, uh, Volkswagens. The earlier ones don't seem to, to be affected, and the later ones don't seem to be affected. Uh, yeehaw! So, is it my vehicle uh, biodiesel compatible? Uh, almost all of them are. The, if you have a particulate trap, you want to better educate yourself with that. Uh, that would be the, uh, the newer vehicles for sure, the Duramaxes, the, uh, uh, the, the newer Power Strokes, uh, what is it, from uh, 2007 on, and um, yeah, yeehaw, and the new Volkswagens. We do have a, a handful of the new Volkswagens. Uh, using a biodiesel uh, without uh, issue, uh, but like I say, uh, you need to really educate yourself before you do that. Short trips. Um, anyhow, anything else, George? Short trips. Oh, short trips, yeah, particulate traps. Um, if you do a bunch of short trips driving around town, uh, uh, you're going to generate a bunch of soot, and that's going to be hard on a particular trap. It's kind of hard on a diesel period and it's going to need to regenerate all the time uh, so hey maybe not the best idea maybe you shouldn't have a uh, uh, a diesel car for that um, yeah uh, our people who have TDIs new TDIs with the particular traps using biodiesel are commuters uh, who, who don't do short trips so that's one thing you uh, keep in mind anyhow kids see you soon